guys welcome to set to a squeaks this video is about a novel this is a novel in which a serious net aspirant should never ignore while preparing and its name is the life and opinions of tristram shandy gentleman written by lawrence stern so guys here is the detailed analysis of stern's very famous work so let us begin Lawrence Stern, who was born on 24th November 1713, was an Anglo-Irish novelist and an Anglican clergyman. He wrote the novels The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy Gentleman and A Sentimental Journey Through France and Italy and also published many sermons, wrote memoirs and was involved in local politics. He died on 18th March 1768. The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy Gentleman also known as Just Tristram Shandy was published in 9 volumes the first two appearing in 1759 and seven others following over the next 7 years that is volume 3 and volume 4 in 1761 volume 5 and volume 6 in 1762 volume 7 and volume 8 in 1765 and volume 9 in 1767 it purports to be a biography of the eponymous character Its style is marked by digression, double entender, and graphic devices. It has been described as a novel without predecessor, novel from individual mind with a lot of pathos and rumors, and these pathos at some point becoming offensively sentimental. The work is highly celebrated and is Tristram's narration of his own life story. But he makes a lot of diversions while telling his story, and finally he couldn't even tell about his birth until volume three. Though Tristram is always present as narrator and commentator, the book contains little of his life, only the story of a trip through France and accounts of the four comical events which shaped the course of his life from an early age. Firstly, while still only a homunculus, meaning a microscopic but fully formed human being from which a fetus was formerly believed to develop, Tristram's implantation within his mother's uterus was disturbed. At the very moment of reproduction his mother asked his father if he had remembered to wind the clock the distraction and annoyance led to the disruption of the proper balance of humors necessary to conceive a well favored child secondly one of his father's pet theories was that a large and attractive nose was important to a man making his way in life in a difficult birth tristram's nose was crushed by dr slop's forceps Thirdly, another of his father's theories was that a person's name exerted enormous influence over that person's nature and fortunes. In view of the previous incidents, Tristram's father decided that the boy would be called Tristram from the name Trismegistus, meaning sorrowful. Finally, as a toddler, Tristram suffered an accidental circumcision when Susanna, his maid, closed the window as he urinated out of the window because his chamber pot was missing. The major characters of this work include Tristram the narrator, Walter his father, then his mother, uncle Toby, then Toby's servant Crim, Susanna the chambermaid, Dr. Slop, Yorick the parson. Yorick is also the protagonist of Sterne's second work of fiction, A Sentimental Journey Through France and Italy. Coming to the narrative structure of this novel, Stern's presence inside the narrative changed the course of traditional novelistic interpretations as his narrative structure digresses through many jumbled and fragmentary events into a non-traditional dual overlapping plot. These digressive methods reflect his inability to simply explain each event as it occurs as he frequently interrupts this event with commentary about how the reader should understand and follow each event. He relies heavily on his readers' close involvement to the text and their interpretations of the non-traditional plot. Tristram's presence inside of the narrative as a narrator engages the imagination and his use of visual strategies such as the marbled and blank pages reflects the importance of the reader's participation in the novel. Tristram Shandy can be considered as a part of abolitionist literature. In 1766 at the height of the debate about slavery Ignatius Sanjo who is a British abolitionist wrote to Stern encouraging the writer to use his pen to lobby for the abolition of the slave trade. He wrote that subject handled in your striking manner would ease the yoke of many but if only one gracious god what a feast to a benevolent heart In July 1766 Sanjo's letter was received by Reverend Lawrence Stern shortly after he had just finished writing a conversation between his fictional characters Corporal Trim and his brother Tom in Tristram Shandy wherein Tom described the oppression of a black servant in a sausage shop in Lisbon which he had visited 
Lawrence Stern's widely publicized 27 July 1766 response to Sanjo's letter became an integral part of the 18th century abolitionist literature. Stern incorporated into Tristram Shanti many passages taken almost word for word from Robert Burton's Anatomy of Melancholy, Francis Bacon's Of Death, Rabelais and many more and rearranged them to serve the new meaning intended in Tristram Shanti. But Tristram Shanti was highly praised for its originality and nobody noticed these borrowings until years after Stern's death. Another major influence on Tristram Shanti is Rabelais, Gargantua and Pantagruel. Rabelais was by far Stern's favorite author and in his correspondence he made clear that he considered himself Rabelais's successor in humorous writing. Alexander Pope and Jonathan Swift were also major influences on Stern and Tristram Shanti. Satires of Pope and Swift form much of the humor of Tristram Shanti. But Swift sermons and logs, essays concerning human understanding also contributed ideas and frameworks that Stern explored throughout the novel. Other major influences are Cervantes and Montaigne's essays as well as the significant intertextual debt to Anatomy of Melancholy, Swift's Battle of the Books and the Scriblerian collaborative work The Memoirs of Martinez Scribblerus. The novel also makes use of John Locke's theories of empiricism. Stern is respectful and satirical of Locke's theories using the association of ideas to construct characters, hobby horses or whimsical obsessions that both order and disorder their lives in different ways. There is a significant body of critical opinion that argues that Tristram Shandy is better understood as an example of an obsolescent literary tradition of learned weight partly following the contributions of D.W. Jefferson. The novel has received lot of critical reviews from many prominent writers. To say few, Arthur Schopenhauer called Tristram Shandy one of the four immortal romances. Samuel Johnson in 1776 commented, Nothing odd will do long. Tristram Shandy did not last. The young Karl Marx was a devotee of Tristram Shandy and wrote a still unpublished short humorous novel, Scorpion and Felix, that was obviously influenced by Stern's work. Tristram Shandy has also been seen by formalists and other literary critics as a forerunner of many narrative devices and styles used by modernist and postmodernist authors such as James Joyce, Virginia Woolf, Carlos Fuentes, Milan Kundera and Salman Rushdie. Novelist Javier Maria cites Tristram Shandy as the book that changed his life when he translated it into Spanish at 25, claiming that from it he learned almost everything about novel writing and that a novel may contain anything and still be a novel. Pointing out some of the adaptations of Tristram Shanti, in 2005, BBC Radio 4 broadcasted an adaptation by Graham White in 10-15 minute episodes directed by Mary Pate. Tristram Shandy has been adapted as a graphic novel by cartoonist Martin Rosen. Michael Neyman has worked sporadically on Tristram Shandy as an opera since 1981. The book was adapted on film in 2006 as a coke and bull story directed by Michael Winterbottom. Tristram Shandy has been translated into many languages including German, Dutch, French, Russia, Hungarian, Italian, Czech, Spanish, Portuguese, Catalan, Norwegian and Finnish. Other works of Lawrence Stern include A Sentimental Journey Through France and Italy, A Political Romance, then A Journal to Elisa. A Sentimental Journey Through France and Italy was written and first published in 1768 as Stern was facing death. In 1765, Stern travelled to France and Italy as far as south as Naples and after returning determined to describe his travels from a sentimental point of view. The novel can be seen as an epilogue to the possibly unfinished work The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy Gentleman and also as an answer to Tobias Mollet's decidedly unsentimental travels through France and Italy. The novel was extremely popular and influential and helped establish travel writing as the dominant genre of the second half of the 18th century. The narrator is the reverend Mr. Yorick who is slightly represented to guileless readers as Stern's barely disguised alter ego. The book re recounts his various adventures usually of the amorous type in a series of self-contained episodes. The book is less eccentric and more elegant in style than Tristram Shanti and was better received by contemporary critics. It was published on 27 February and on 18th March, Stern died. 
Then a political romance. It is a 1759 novel by Lawrence Stern, and it can be considered as a more epic allegory that describes a provincial squabble between a church lawyer, an archbishop, and a dean. That is a Lilliputian satire on ecclesiastical politics in Stern's work. Next one is a journal to Elisa. It was published posthumously in 1904. The journal is in the form of a diary cum letter and was inspired by his deep affection for Mrs Elizabeth Draper whom he had met when she visited England in 1765 to 1767 And that's all about this novel now let us discuss the previous year question paper based on Tristram Shanty The first question is The life and opinions of Tristram Shandy gentleman is notorious for its many digressions across nine volumes and its failure to deliver a complete autobiography in which volume does Tristram Shandy finally recounts his birth four options are given or volume 3 volume 5 volume 8 and volume 9 and the correct answer is option A volume 3 Next question is in Tristram Shandy Corporal Trim's brother Tom describes the oppression of black servant in a sausage shop in Lisbon that he visited This episode is inspired by a letter Lawrence Stern received from a black man Stern's reply become became an integral part of 18th century abolitionist literature Name the person who wrote the aforementioned letter to Stern Four options are there William Wilbur Force Ignatius Sancho, William Blackstone, and John Lockin Hawkins. The correct answer is option two. Ignatius Sancho. So, guys, that's all regarding Tristram Shandy. Hope you understood this content thoroughly. And, guys, if you have any doubts regarding this content, you can post it in the comment section. And, guys, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our channel. So, thank you.